to do this little video here just to say thank you. Thank you so much for all your support. I have reached over a thousand subscribers. Never thought I'd come this far. It's great. I mean, uh, I find this stuff really interesting. And so I just thought I would start making videos about it because uh, it's just something that I like to do, you know, taking stuff apart, reselling it. So I'm really glad that there's other people that find it interesting what I do. So it's, it's fun to share it with other people. If you guys are interested, I did a little interview a little while back. Um, I did an inf interview on this uh, podcast. It's called scavengerlife.com. I'll put the link in the description below. So anyways, they put out a weekly podcast. I've been, I've been listening to this podcast for uh, year, at least over two years about that. And uh, so I listen every week. Weekly podcast comes out on Monday. I would just start going through all their old podcasts, like start at number one. I think they're at like 304 different podcasts. Start at number one and just start listening to all of them. They're about an hour each. They mainly focus on like clothing and uh, vintage items, shoes, stuff like that. But they're always interested in doing an interview with someone who sells with parts. So I, I heard that and I contacted them through email. And yeah, so we arranged a little interview. So it's kind of fun. It was a neat little thing to do. They have a, a website and they have a forum so you can get involved in their, in their forum. And uh, but there's lots of other resellers that go there. Out of everybody on the internet, I find that I really connect to their mindset the most because they're just so down to earth and uh, just a very simple business model, which is just list, list, list. Just keep on listing nonstop all the time. Uh, a couple weeks ago is my birthday that just passed. So uh, yeah, thank you. Happy birthday. But the reason why I always remember my birthday is because on my birthday on that exact same day is the day I quit my job and I quit my job two years ago. And so that was a big, huge turning point. Didn't really enjoy it very much. <laughs> that's uh, that's an understatement. I would see scrap on the side of the road all the time. So I would stop to pick it up. Like after my shift, after like one o'clock in the morning, I would go out and I'd start picking up scrap. And that's how I kind of got started, you know, with this with this side business. Before my shift would start, I would bring in a load of scrap to the scrapyard, and I would go from the scrapyard to my job, and then I would start my big long shift. So it was, it was very hard. I was doing that for a couple of years, uh, just work, 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 work. And uh, eventually, I came to we came to the point where we were like, we're doing very well. You know, I had just started eBay at that time. I didn't have very many listings. My wife, Christine, she's the best. She's just like, just quit your job. Just quit. We can do this. We can work it out. And then, yeah, so I gave my week's notice and I quit my job and had a pension plan, had all the benefits. So it was a tough decision, but I mean, I was miserable, <laughs> very miserable, hard job. And uh, so I'm glad I quit. Our situation here, you know, you're seeing me make these videos, you're seeing me, you know, how I make money. Um, that's, that's it. I mean, there's no other way I'm making money right now. I don't, I don't have another job. I'm working for myself all the time. And, uh, and Christine, uh, she, she has a couple projects on the go, but she's a stay at home mom. She's a homeschooler. She homeschools our two boys. She's awesome. She does an amazing job at that. And she also helps me a lot with my business. Uh, you don't really, I don't really see, yeah, I don't show it, but she does a lot of work. She helps me on with the truck. She helps me down here, listing, shipping, all sorts of stuff. So I want to do a huge shout out to some of my favorite YouTubers. I have a lot of YouTubers that I watch and that I watch on a regular basis, you know, that I'm subscribed to. So I can't name everybody. So please don't be offended if you're not, uh, if I don't mention you. Uh, but these are just some of the YouTubers that have mentioned me in their videos. All right, guys. So these are some of my favorite YouTube channels. So check them out if you haven't already done so. Uh, this is Ben Houghton. He's in the UK. And he's a scrapper, e-waste recycler. And he does a lot of videos on teardowns. So he can, he'll show you exactly how much uh, a particular item is worth in scrap value. And he talks through all the videos, gives you lots of good uh, tips and tricks on what to do with your scrap, how to make more money. And he shows you uh, some of the stuff he finds too. Yeah, I like watching all of his videos. I watch every single one. If you guys uh, 
make sure you always hit this little bell and that way you get your uh, notification from your favorite YouTuber exactly when they post a new video so it will come up here uh, new video will pop up this is scavenger life and this is the podcast I was telling you about so they put out a weekly podcast so their videos are just of them talking there's no like uh, live action or anything it's just a, a voice recording um, but every single week they put out a new podcast video and uh, everything eBay so they just talk about eBay what they're doing talk about you know just their lives in general I've watched every single video uh, there's the one that they did with me and uh, yeah that was episode 309 so they have a lot of different videos so make sure if you're interested in in learning more about eBay just uh, start going through all the old ones yeah so go check them out scavenger life this is taco stacks and uh, just recently started watching his channel and he's putting out a lot of great content um, he is a flea market guy and he also does scrapping he goes to auctions garage sales uh, picking up side uh, picking up some scrap on the side of the road finding out uh, a lot of different ways to make money and uh, it's really fun to to see different perspectives on how to uh, make money from your scrap from your from stuff that you find so he goes to flea markets and now he's got me thinking about doing a flea market too the print Again, watching every single one of his videos, um, so he's just the alley cat. He just walks down alleyways, finds really cool things in the trash, and uh, he bottle picks this because he's in Calgary, where they, where he lives. He gets the deposit for all of his bottles. Uh, yeah, really great channel. puts out a lot of different kinds of videos. So I like watching all of them. Dumpster Marcus, I watch all of his videos too. Uh, I've been watching him for a long time, putting out lots of content of uh, scrapping and kind of like a video log of what he's been up to and yeah so he, make sure you go uh, check him out Tucker Upper again just recently started watching his videos um, you know probably about the same time I started putting out videos and uh, he is like a scrapper and he's doing lots of different stuff he's just kind of videotaping every day putting out uh, his life out on the internet so I think that's really cool. I I like his positive uh, attitude, um, and yeah. So he's it's pretty addicting his videos. I like watching all of them. I'm starting to talk like him too a little bit, you know, talking like, uh, "Hey, Christine, what's your claim on this dinner? It's awesome." <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can, I don't do it as well as him though. Yeah, Scrap Vulture. Uh, he's great too. I watching all of his videos for a long time. Dumpster diving on a motorcycle and putting a new perspective on a uh, different way of doing things. I watch all of his videos too. Uh, a little channel that you might not know about, Mike uh, McKinister. He is doing some scrapping too and recycling, flea market stuff, auction stuff. So kind of the same stuff that I'm into. So uh, Mike McKinister, if you haven't uh, heard of him, go check him out. All right, so let me take you guys on a tour of my eBay store. So this is about two years of work that I've been doing and it's been I, I've rearranged this place you know so many different times I've uh, I've had so many different setups down here right now this is how I feel like it works the best for me but there's no doubt it's going to keep changing and evolving as my business evolves more and more you know by the way I, I haven't cleaned up at all for this video this is how it always looks so you know if you see some mess somewhere this is it you know I, I keep it this kind of cleanliness and organized all the time being organized I think is one of the best things you can do for your business you, you don't want to be all cluttered up this thing here I found on the side of the road it's a bottle of old it's actually full it's a sealed bottle of Chinese liqueur I don't know what to do with it because you can't sell it uh, you can't sell it online obviously or you can't even sell it on any Facebook groups. Really, you're not allowed to sell alcohol, so I don't know what to do with that thing. Um, but yeah, up here, spare printer. It's always good to have a, a spare uh, laser jet printer on hand with some toner. That's just some, uh, some other stuff, the drill that I found. Uh, up here is just the uh, batteries that I get all the time. And, you know, every time I find a battery, I 
I test it and put it in a bucket. Up here is like a bunch of different media, different types of media that I keep on hand to test stuff. That's a amplifier I keep to, uh, to test stuff. Um, you know, different things to clean stuff up, you know, toothbrush, you know, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. It's kind of dusty actually. Those are phones that I'm have been tested, working phones to be, to be tested. Uh, down here is like my table that I use to, uh, just to work with, you know, I put stuff here and then I look at it and try to figure it out. I use a pan like this to wash off all the switches. You know, I soak them in, uh, I soak them in like a cleaner and I just try and get all the goop off of it first. And there's a scale. That's the printer I've been using. I actually found that printer in my bin and it came with a full thing of toner. The toner was completely full. Printer works fine. So it's been great. This is all the, uh, so far that's 2017. That's each time I print off a shipping label. Uh, it comes with the label itself. On the other side of it is like a receipt. So that's what those are. So I, I just keep them all up in there for now for taxes, tax purposes. Uh, I keep pictures on my desk of the kids and stuff. Um, up here is like some racks of different things that I have, uh, scale, multimeter tester, it's a soldering gun in there, little connectors, and I keep some screwdrivers here on magnets, actually I should keep that in my keychain, um, caliper is always a great thing to have, scissors, I like to use these little, uh, paper clips for everything, and yeah. Ziploc bags. One of the things I I find I always get asked all the time on our channels, on my channel is how do I test motors, right? So this is kind of a contraption that I use. Now testing stuff out like, like this is really, really dangerous. You know, you can kill yourself doing it like this, but you know, I've been around electricity quite a bit. I've been shocked and electrocuted quite a bit <laughs> so i know what it feels like i have a healthy respect for, for electricity so but this is kind of what i do is that you know i hook up don't mind these things on but i just use like alligator clips you know black to black white to white and so i'll just hook up a motor like that and then see if it runs um guys if you're not really familiar with electricity you know I don't want to, I don't want anyone to try and duplicate what I'm doing and then they get hurt. Uh, so that's why I don't really want to show people how I test things. Like I don't want to give a tutorial on how I test motors and other things like that because I don't want to, I think people will try and duplicate what I'm doing exactly and they won't really get a good grasp of it and they could really hurt themselves so my table here that you always see me you know working at this is like uh uh shipping i do my shipping up here it's actually this table was my parents house and that's the table i used to eat at when i was a young lad um yeah my family of six can you picture a family of six sitting around this table here um down here that's just uh some tape cat slash dog sleeping box these are all my taxes you know i keep i do all my own taxes so i sort out all my own receipts so yeah i, I keep track of all my own taxes i do all my own uh accounting software uh, up here is kind of like this is uh this shelf is kind of i use for collections so every time i find something i kind of put it up here so you have like a box of these old fuses, for example. So every time I get a fuse, I throw it in there. And then eventually when you get a big pile of it, I'll sell it. So over here is like some lamp parts. I part out like every time I get a lamp, I just take it all apart. And then I put the pieces in these boxes. So just give you an idea. Well, I can't really reach in there. See, this one says ornamental decor lamp parts. So it's stuff like this. You know, I just put it all in a box and uh, I'll list it as a lot eventually. So I do that all around here. This one is like keys, for example. It's just full of keys. Uh, 
so. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of it. It would take forever. But you get the idea. There's like lighters and shirt buttons, postcards, all sorts of stuff. And then just around here, this is just like my area that I use, that I kind of store things temporarily to test it. Again, this corner, I have another backup printer right there that I got the bin. It has a full, it works perfect, has a full toner cartridge. So here is just a shelving unit that I built. And this is everything that has been listed on eBay. Here, for example, this is a box for remote controls, you know, and uh, this one here, this is all hard drives. Um, washing machine control boards, microwave front control modules, furnace transformers, furnace boards, uh, microwave magnetrons. This this one here I seem to pull from a lot. It's just a lot of little contact relays and relay switches. Uh, this one here is just like... Uh, uh, same thing, like limit switches, little breakers, laptop screens, laptop keyboards, AC adapters and cables, TV parts, TV boards. This one up here is just all, uh, it's just all microwave parts. This one here is dishwasher parts, trick furnace elements. Yeah, so that's it. So everything on this wall has been listed. It's on listed on eBay right now. Even these bins down here. So again, just uh, this is just a big thing full of gas valves, furnace gas valves, furnace parts, my vacuum parts, washer dryer, washer dryer, washer dryer parts. Those three right up here. This is just capacitors that I have. Um, some water valve solenoids, more vacuum parts, lawnmower parts. Uh, those two are refrigerator parts. So, you know, you just get a whole bunch of different things there. Little fan motors. Um, these are hot water tank valves. These ones here seem to do... Off, these uh, are off and on. Sometimes I sell them, sometimes I don't. But I have made quite a few... Quite a bit of money off of uh, these pressure switches so up here these are just parts i have from a, a nissan that i that i parted out motors right there tv stands up here these are probably the one of the best things that i sell in my store these are all furnace inducer motors this is where i keep them that's a transformer from a uh, oil burning furnace so yeah these are are some of the best things i sell so right now I don't have too many, but when I start getting more furnaces, this will start to just be filled up and they don't, the, the good ones don't seem to stay on the shelf for very long. Up here is where I keep some vintage electronics I have listed, you know, turntable. There's a couple laptops up there as well. Down here, these are range uh, switches and stuff here. So there's some elements there, range parts. Uh, some of them are kind of empty. These are the burner switches. So I pull from that quite a bit. Some knobs, dryer timers. Um, so yeah, I'm doing okay with this uh, sort of organizing right now. Um, just to finish up here, there's a, a lawn tractor, snow blower, and there's some parts there from the refrigerator. These are just all the refrigerator bins. I actually sold one of these uh, just today, just now, which was nice. I just listed that less than a week ago. I have a catalytic converter there that I'm still trying to sell and some snowblower tires. And these two lots here are, uh, they're very, very big. This one here is actually just full of these those telephones. I'm gonna have to cancel out that listing. I don't think anyone will buy it. And it's just taking up so much space that I'm going to cancel it and I'm going to do something about that lot. Maybe maybe just recycle it. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's uh, computer power supplies. Uh, what was I saying before? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this this system is going okay for me. Um, there's a certain certain one. Oh, yeah, these, furnace, these transformers. So, these two boxes here 
are full of these transformers and they it's really heavy you know it's it's going okay so far but if i start getting more i'm gonna have to try and find a better system on how to organize this maybe what i'll do is i'll just get a third box it's just to thin it out a little bit but you know to try and find a transformer that's on the bottom i have to pull the whole box down you know go through the whole thing just so over here this is just like a whole bunch of boxes that i keep uh storage right now um and these keyboards here are listed so i'm just using that to kind of keep the the boxes up uh, for now and i like these boxes here to ship the keyboards they're kind of a weird shaped one it's like shaped like a boat but uh, i like those for for moving keyboards shipping keyboards and again like my last video i said uh this is just stuff that once I made a listing on Turbo Lister, I put it here and then I will take, this is all stuff here to take a picture of. Um, so I only have three things so far to take pictures of. My photo studio, this is just a thin piece of fiberboard stuff that you can buy at Home Depot for under $10. And so I bent it all the way around and screwed it to the ceiling here. And then I just painted it white and this is just uh, my lighting system here. I kind of showed that before, um, so I won't go over it too much, but basically it's just, uh, uh, you know, it just has an on off switch right there. And there's some extra paint that I use that I keep every time it gets dirty, I just paint it. A little paint brush right there that I keep. These bins here are for AC adapters that I keep for testing. So these are all laptop AC adapters and these are just uh, power cords, just your basic power cords that I keep around. And same with here, this is kind of like miscellaneous power cords. I think that's just my old shoes. <laughs> and back here is where I keep a black piece of paper, some black paper that I use for photographing clear, clear glass. Shop vac right there for cleaning off some of the, uh, the things that I bring down here. This is all books. So from here to here is all listed stuff. And then from here to there is stuff that I have to go through still to see if it's worth selling. Oh, wait. Uh, I think some of these things are listed. Yeah. Oh, I can't, can't remember. Yeah, okay. So I think it's like right from here down to here is all listed. And then that shelf there I have to go through. I think it's something like that. I don't do very many books. I have sold a few. So this is the second part of my basement. Yeah, so this is just uh, our water treatment system that we have because uh, we're on a well. You know, if, every time I find something that it's not really worth listing on eBay, but it's not worth just getting rid of, and it's not worth selling on uh, Kijiji or Craigslist, I put in, I'm putting this stuff in boxes right now thinking, eh, I'm going to go to a flea market sometime this this summer. So yeah, I'm always watching Taco Sack's videos. Um, he's got me thinking really hard about uh, going to flea markets. So this, this shelf here um, is a bit of everything. This is a listed box of toners, uh, used toners. Um, this is the, the, the odd time that I will actually pre-package something. So I pre-packaged uh, all these toners in this box. So as soon as it gets bought, all I have to do is just tape it up and then put a label on it and it'll be shipped out. Usually I don't do that, but for those toners, I did do that. Um, up here, just some stuff kind of keeping for now. Um, that's listed, but that's our spare coffee maker that we're keeping for as a backup bunch of brass down there so I every time I find a piece of brass I just put it in this box and then I'll when that box gets really full I'll just sell it as a lot this here is all my cell phones every time I find a cell phone I put it in here lots of neat cell phones in there oh yeah it's funny the one I want to show you I just I pulled it out right away this is a uh, an original smartphone let me see if I can just flip it out it's like a, a Palm Pilot cell phone. I thought that was really neat, except it's missing the stylus. 
And those two boxes are all our video games, uh, video game stuff. So every time I get a video game thing, I put in here. Um, there's a Nintendo GameCube there, and I have a N64. Oh yeah, there's also a Sega Dreamcast right there. Um, the Sega Dreamcast was dropped off my bin. The N64, the GameCube, the Xbox. I got all that stuff from my bin. So I'm holding on to that for now until I get an N64 game that I can test it. Same with the Dreamcast and the GameCube. Uh, golf ball collection. <laughs> uh, these are all, you know, the uh, ink printer things. So this whole wall, again, that's all listed things. Um, I have about 1,250 items listed on eBay right now, so so I have to have a lot of shelving. So, sorry the lighting gets pretty bad in this part, but basically this is kind of like electronics. I don't really have a very good sorting system. It's all based on my memory. So whenever something sells, I kind of, I know where it is on, on my shelving. I should really start to think about a good way to organize this, you know, like some sort of Dewey Decimal system, I'm not sure. Um, you know, TV stands, there's a whole bunch of like software. This is tools, I believe. Yeah, there's a bunch of tools. Um, yeah, so you kind of get the idea. These are all the blower motors that I have listed. They're all a bunch of blower motors down there. Kind of just random stuff. I don't know how to explain it. This kind of section is like uh, houseware type stuff and collectibles. Uh, yeah, more collectibles. This section is like games and toys. So you see there's a bunch of board games there. Uh, yeah. And this is like hardware, um, more collectible type stuff. Down here is like some metal. Like this is all metal type stuff that's listed. So, you know, I have like these uh, hay forks. Uh, all these vintage like cutting shears. A coffee tin from Russia. <laughs> I had no idea. It's all in Russia, Russian. And so what I did is I used Google Translator to to figure out what that said. And it's coffee. It's a coffee tin. I found that one day. More stuff that's listed. All this stuff's listed. Um, kind of lots of toys. There's Andre. Stay right there, buddy. The motors, discharge pumps from washing machines, dishwasher motors, microwave transformers, washing machine motors. Um, this box is kind of just a thing of uh, computer spare parts that I'm keeping here for now. If I ever need to... What was that? <laughs> if I ever want to uh, fix up... Uh, my computer, I have a couple of spare parts. Um, this is all glass plates. So um, this is how I've been organizing it for now. So that's a vacuum cleaner I have listed. I have the whole thing listed as is. Mr. Potato Heads, little collection there, that's listed. Our freezer. Uh, oh, I used to be a, I used to do some beekeeping. I have some of the old uh, honey supers right there. Used to be a beak. Uh, so yeah, this stuff again is all listed. This is stuff. This is from the Saturn Ion that's in my driveway right now. And that's just kind of just storage junk. Um, underneath the staircase here, this is just the garbage can. And right there is for recycling, like metal recycling, uh, wiring, stuff that I will bring back out to the yard and I'll put it in this, in this right bin. And uh, that's just a garbage chair. My cat always likes to sleep on that. <laughs> so I'm just kind of keeping it there for now. That's just uh, paper recycling. And this is all stuff, more stuff that I will go through and uh, see if it's worth selling, see if it's worth listing. Of course, the furnace boards are good. Those are worth it. But you know, for example, I don't know if those bells are really, are really worth my time. Sewing machines, typewriter. Yeah, and uh, this, this uh, shelving unit here. There's all the boxes that I use. Canada, we don't have 
uh, the post office doesn't give us any boxes. It's not like a USPS where they give you boxes to ship your things in. Um, it, there's nothing like that. So we here in Canada, we have to use our own boxes. And uh, my post office likes to give me lots of their, you know, air pillows and bubble wrap. Um, but I do have some boxes that I have um, gotten because of my eBay store subscription and a bunch of this newspaper I keep here for void fill and there's a couple more boxes of stuff. Yeah, but I do buy uh, all my, I, I buy these big rolls of bubble wrap and I keep it here and every time, this because where I do my shipping, so I just rip them up, rip off a square, you know, or two, whatever I need. All right, guys, that kind of covers it. I think I covered everything down here in the basement. Um, this is my store. This is my eBay store. This is how I make a living. I'm happy to show the world what I do for a living. Happy to show everybody that uh, um, that it's uh, it's possible to uh, make a living selling other people's garbage, <laughs> um, selling things that people need. Otherwise, they would have to find their items brand new and pay a lot more money for it so they can buy things from me and get a big discount and keep their 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 items that they need to live with keep those items going number one i make some money i can support my family number two the customer is getting a good discount on their item and number three um <clears throat> we uh i'm keeping things out of the landfill and also the people on the other end are keeping their uh, their appliances or whatever out of landfill as well so you know i'm, I'm if i send like a, a washing machine motor to uh, california or whatever that person's washing machine is going to last them like a couple more years right so uh their i their appliance stays out of the waste stream and yeah so it's, i think it's a really good little system that i got going on everybody wins and uh um yeah i don't know i think that's all i wanted to say with this video uh it's a fun little job and i'm glad that you guys think it's a neat little job too can't really remember if there's something else i wanted to show you or talk about but whatever maybe if i remember what it is i'll put it in my next few videos and uh yeah so thanks so much for watching and uh, subscribing and commenting and liking the videos it really means so much to me i'm really having a great time and hopefully you guys are learning something new or liking what I do and having a good time watching the videos. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.